All right, welcome back everyone to um, our Open Education Week celebration, our tour de force of OER degree and adoption showcases. This is our seventh in uh, 10 uh, sessions today. And I'm very pleased to introduce Galen Scott, Dr. Galen Scott, who is the Associate Vice President of Academic Programs at Austin Community College. She is also uh, the lead for the OER degree initiative that is um, being run out of the Texas Consortium of Five Colleges. And I know that she will share uh, more about that uh, right now. All right, thank you very much, Una. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what y'all might want to know. Um, I can certainly answer questions about the Texas Consortium, but I thought I would start just letting you know a little bit about ACC, who we are, and so you get a feel for Austin Community College. Um, we currently have 11 campuses. Um, come the summer, we will be opening our 12th campus. Um, we are organized around the one college concept, so while we may have a dozen campuses, we have a single instructional administrative structure. So um, that um, has, you know, positives and negatives, but more positives than negatives. It allows us to really be consistent across all of our campuses and some of the things that we do. Um, we have a robust early college high school program. We have 10 early college high schools. We also have a robust dual credit program in which we take um, college courses and teach them at high school campuses um, for dual credit students. And I think I'm probably lowballing the number of dual credit students, but it's between seven and 8,000, I think. Um, every college in Texas has a defined service area. And so you'll see that we have a six county service area that's in green. And then the teal color is our taxing district within that service area. And you'll see highlighted our um, 11 campuses. The 12th one will be in Leander up there in the, the north um, side of our taxing district. Our um, service area covers about 7,000 7, square miles. We used to say we have a service area the size of New Jersey. So um, it's, it's quite an interesting undertaking to provide um, community college um, coursework and opportunities to folks across that area. We opened for business in September of 1973, um, and these days we partner across that service area with approximately 30 school districts. Um, we have about 40,000 credit students each semester. Like many community colleges, the vast majority of our students are part-time. Um, we, we have a solid uh, Hispanic student population, more of our students that are female than male. Um, we have other minority students, Asian American, African American, and our average age is uh, 24.5. We're getting a little younger these days because we're getting more dual credit students. That picture you see on the screen is of our accelerator at our Highland campus. That is a, a huge computer lab, 604 computer stations, in a space the size of a football field. We also have learning labs in there. We have academic coaching. We do a lot of math, um, developmental math courses in the accelerator, but we also do a lot of other courses where faculty just want to take their students in for maybe one class period or maybe for a week um, to have them engage um, in those um, computer mediated learning environments. Um, and we are replicating the accelerator on a smaller scale um, at several of our other campuses. We've had great success with our developmental math approach in there. Um, now to talk a little bit about the OER degree initiative. <clears throat> um, I find it here at ACC, it's important to help people understand why we do what we do. And a lot of the things that we're doing really all flow from our um, strategic plan. Our strategic plan focuses on three things, improved access and enrollment, increased persistence and engagement, and increased completion and transition to employment or transfer. So while we may be talking about um, an early alert system, or um, maybe it's our guided pathways work, or maybe it's you know looking at inclusive access, or the OER degree initiative, or many of the other things we're doing, it all really is aimed at helping our students come in our door 
persist and engage with learning while they're here and then complete and transition on to their next step, employment or transfer or both. Uh, the, as Una said, <clears throat> we partnered with some other colleges in Texas and put in um, a consortium approach um, in our grant for the OER degree initiative. So we are working with San Jacinto College in Houston, with El Paso Community College, and with one of the colleges in the Alamo District in San Antonio um, to build our OER degrees. Um, and let me tell you just a little bit about how this looks here at ACC. We decided in the consortium approach that we would divvy up the course development work and that um, we would select courses that could support uh, general studies degrees, um, either at El Paso or at San Jack or Alamo or at ACC. Here at ACC, we have three general studies degrees. We have an AS in pre-health sciences, an AS in general studies, which is very similar to the AS in pre-health sciences, just not quite so specifically directed at supporting students who want to get their prereqs before they apply to our health sciences programs. And then we, all have an, we also have an AA in general studies. <clears throat> um, across those three general studies degrees, as you can see, we have approximately 11,000 declared majors. So it's obvious that if we can build an OER-based pathway around our general studies degrees, we can serve thousands of our students. Um, we can help them move forward from one semester to the next. We can help them get started on the very first day by having available and accessible course materials. We can steer some of their course taking um, to, you know, more intentional course progression based on the OER courses that we're developing. Uh, so it really does reflect that strategic plan that I mentioned around access, uh, persistence, and completion. Um, as with all of these <clears throat> um, presentations, I'm sure that are from colleges working on the OER degree initiative, it's a very fast timeline to um, meet the deliverables of the grant. Um, the grant kickoff was in the summer of 2016. In the Texas Consortium, we had to figure out how we would div divvy up the coursework. Um, we essentially came up with an approach that um, we would ask faculty to apply to be course developers, and we would ask faculty to apply to be course reviewers. And so ACC is developing nine courses, and then the other courses in um, the general studies pathways are being developed by the other uh, colleges. And so we have course developers here, but we also have faculty who are reviewing courses that are developed by their colleagues at San Jacinto or El Paso or in the Alamo system. So we had to figure out communications and connections across colleges and within these disciplines, how can we share courses? How can we provide feedback to the faculty developers to make those courses even better? So we did all of that in <clears throat> the summer and fall of 2016. And then a year ago, in the spring semester of 2017, we rolled out 29 sections of 11 courses under the um, grant. Um, we had a total of 936 students register for those first grant-funded courses. Now, um, one of the things I discovered as the director of this grant, both at the consortium level and then here at ACC, is that we're also running other OER sections that aren't grant-funded and aren't technically part of the OER degree initiative, but are still supporting the pathway through some of these general studies um, programs. So I did a better job of tracking OER sections in the fall of 2017. Um, we had 21 different courses that were being offered with some OER sections, and we had an enrollment of almost 3,200 students. Now I should tell you that we don't have a single course where every single section is being taught with OER. Um, OER is a faculty level decision. Um, we are encouraging faculty to look at open educational resources to consider their merit, um, to um, try them out and see if they think they're appropriate for their classes. But um, it is still a faculty decision. So um, the numbers are gonna change each semester. But in the fall, across both grant-funded and non-grant-funded courses, 
we had almost 3,200 students in our OER classes around our campuses. And then this spring, um, we're running 24 courses that are OER. And um, the last headcount I had, which was about a month ago, we had slightly more than 5,200 students in those OER sections. Um, we've done some early data gathering just on our own. Um, I'm still waiting on data from the fall classes, but from last spring, what we saw with those um, 936 students was that they, that they did as well, and in some cases slightly better on success metrics as students in sections taught with proprietary textbooks. So in terms of you know, course completion rates, um, course grades, um, students are doing just as well and occasionally a little bit better. And I should also tell you that as part of this OER degree initiative, um, we are a research partner looking at the student impact of an OER pathway. A lot of the OER research, as y'all know, um, is course-based. How do students do in an OER section versus a non-OER section? We're trying to get at something more interesting, which is um, do OER opportunities help students persist? Do perhaps they help students take another class? Um, as you recall, uh, more than, than three-fourths of our students are part-time. If we offer enough OER sections, maybe students can take three classes instead of two because they're saving money on textbook costs. So we're trying to look at that and our partner in the student impact research is SRI. We're also a cost research partner. Um, our PK group is running that cost research and we're trying to dig into um, the, the costs that are associated with developing an OER degree. Um, cost savings, um, cost obligations, um, so that's really going to be interesting research as well. Um, and I'm looking at my watch. So let me talk just very briefly about, I have to preach the gospel of open pedagogy just really quickly. Um, you know, persistence and completion are, uh, are really impacted by the kind of learning that takes place. And learning reflects the teaching that takes place. And what I tell our faculty is that OER is not just about um, saving students money. It's not just about having materials available on the first day. It's also really about how you can teach differently, how you can enhance student learning and persistence and completion. Um, you all know David Wiley and, and his focus on open pedagogy. Um, he really talks about how learning can be built around revising and remixing, how learning can be um, built around renewable assignments rather than disposable assignments. And he offers example, examples um, that faculty can use. Um, but that's really an opportunity, I think, um, to support our mission as community colleges. If we can not only use OER for um, the availability and the cost savings and the engagement with the course materials, but if we can also use OER in a way that results in um, what he says there are artifacts that provide unique student-centric views of topics then I think we're really doing some interesting and creative work um, to the benefit of our students and, and the missions that we have as community colleges. Very quickly, let me tell you a little bit about lessons learned. Um, engaging faculty in this work really does improve pedagogy. Um, so um, one of the lessons we've learned is that you have to offer regular opportunities prof for professional development. Um, just as soon as you think faculty know what OER might mean, you um, talk about it and you have faculty who are asking what on earth OER stands for. So you have to sort of preach that gospel all the time. You have to really weave librarians and instructional designers into this work so that they're available and accessible to faculty. And I would say you should encourage faculty to adopt and adapt wherever possible. Um, we've decided at ACC we really don't want to be in the publishing business. So um, outside of a couple of courses where you're not gonna see a lot of available resources. Um, we really want faculty to adopt and adapt and curate rather than starting from scratch. Um, as you're doing this work, you really have to think about systems and processes. How are you gonna track OER sections? How are you gonna designate them in your course schedule? How are you gonna designate them in your student information system so you can help students find them and register for them? Let me show you one thing that we've done. This is just a screenshot from our course schedule. 
we wrote some standard language and for every single section um, we put the same language on. You'll see it there. This class utilizes free open educational resources materials in lieu of required textbooks. Access to these online materials will be provided on the first day of class. Students have the option to print copies but will res be responsible for printing costs. We put that in every single OER section. This spring that was 197 sections. So that's a lot of tedious manual work to enter those course notes on every single section. But we want students to understand a little bit about what OER mean. Um, we also um, tag our OER section so that students can sort for OER. Again, this is just a screenshot. You'll see over on the, on the left under course types, um, standard, hybrid, dual, early college, high school, honors, open educational resources. So we want students to be able to sift and sort once they start to learn more about what it means to to take a class taught with open educational resources. Um, every discipline is different. You need to really be prepared for different reactions to the idea of OER. Um, I have one discipline that is very clear in their sensibility that there is no OER, no OER that's good enough um, for what they do and how they do it. I have other disciplines where the adoption of OER has spread really quickly. Um, I have one discipline where it's just a couple of adjuncts and they, they don't have much traction with full-time faculty, so it's not spreading. So it really is going to vary by different, by discipline and by, even by faculty connection um, within the discipline. Um, you need to think through the institutional supports that are needed to make OER work, um, especially if you're building an OER degree pathway or more than one. What policies and procedures do you need? Um, what kind of institutional supports need to be in place to help faculty adopt or adapt. Um, it, you need to develop best practices. You need to define your terms um, so that you can send faculty to, you know, a kind of what, what are OER, you know, FAQs page, that sort of thing. Um, you need to think about sustainability. Um, while faculty may adopt and adapt, Nonetheless, some elements of OER materials really need to be updated periodically. How are you going to do that? How are you going to sustain it? Are you going to impose a section fee, a course fee, just a general um, technology fee or some other sustainability fee on students? Um, there are costs associated with building OER degree pathways and really trying to encourage um, adoption of OER. So those kinds of questions have to be considered in the context of your institution and, and what would work there. Um, ongoing training, um, some faculty need to understand how to integrate OER within your college LMS. Um, if you're going to add content, you have to make sure that it's ADA compliant and that it's appropriately licensed, um, has to be updated and revised, so you have to support that work. Um, that is um, uh, those are some of the lessons we've learned. We're still thinking through some of the other lessons. Because of our research study, we haven't pushed OER across every single campus as much as we might have wanted to because we have treatment campuses and control campuses. Um, but we will start pushing um, and helping students and faculty across all campuses learn more about OER. So, you know, there has to be a marketing plan. Um, you have to help students learn about the OER degrees. Um, offering an OER degree pathway at ACC doesn't mean that every single campus will have every single course in that degree available as OER because it's a faculty driven decision. So, you know, sort of navigating those things. Um, one of the things we're rolling out is textbook heroes. Um, I have a couple of samples here. Our libraries have their own marketing team. And so they have um, started marketing these posters um, with faculty here at ACC. Um, uh, you see Tina Buck who teaches English and there's a little quote from Tina um, up above. You say, see Wayne Butler on the left. He teaches business government and technical communications, a quote from him on the uh, sort of underneath, um, talking about how they are saving students money by teaching with OER. So um, we've just started doing that. And that is the end of my very quick presentation um, because I wanted to leave time for some questions. And so I'm happy to answer questions if people have some. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Galen, uh, for sharing um, your path um, with the OER degree. Um, it's very interesting um, being a research partner in particular. Um, so it's, I think that's really fascinating, but we're going to have some great data um, coming out next year around this around the efficacy of um, OER degrees and so forth and cost, of course. Exactly. Um, the way our particular research study was designed, um, we are trying to provide students with a treatment of at least four OER courses um, to see if that sort of level of, you know, engagement with OER and that cost savings to students to see what kind of impact that might have. So. It's a quasi-experimental design. It's been a challenge to navigate that um, in some ways, but it's such important research. I'm really interested to see what we're gonna find out on the other end. We were just visited by SRI and RPK group last week, and they did some focus groups, and they did some interviews. So there are some qualitative elements to the research as well that will be really interesting. Wonderful. And if there are no questions, um, I guess I can unshare my screen. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Galen, and and for leaving your contact information. I suspect that um, some people may want to contact you um, and get a little more detail about the, the work you're doing. Absolutely. I'm happy to answer questions by email or set up a phone call or anything else. Um, so feel free to send an email. Alrighty, thank you so much. And thank you also to um, our participants today who've been tuning in to hear about the, the great work that uh, not only Austin Community College, uh, but also our other presenters have been doing.